What's cracking people? It's your man Cousin T, aka the Alpha Wingman, representing high level technicians operating globally and beyond. So listen, today I wanted to offer uh, a response to uh, a video that the Master Teacher BGS Itmore um, produced <clears throat> in terms of the presence of a would-be AI God and I'll leave a link for that video in the description and basically uh, that video was born from a greater conversation that happened with the meeting of the masters. Uh, shout out to uh, the field master Ron Wills. Uh, the only way anybody could ever have, uh, you know, uh, a guest list waiting period to even be allowed access to that space is through the field master himself. So uh, I can't provide that for anybody. You got to see, to the, you got to talk to the man. In any case, uh, my initial response to BGS's post is this. A lot of uh, thinkers, a lot of scientists in terms of technology, in terms of deep thinking, in terms of quantum consciousness, in terms of machine learning, uh, in terms of artificial intelligence, are attempting to assemble and attempting to present that which would represent a quote-unquote godlike uh, system that would be capable eventually of autonomous thought. Now I know that statement says a lot and it insinuates a lot and I say it that way to present my response in the form of uh, an alternative view towards what a God quote unquote is in the first place. Now of course this conversation could go on for hours and even days but in my attempt to, uh, to condense this into bite-sized phrases I'll say this it's not necessarily a conversation about what a God is or what God potential is it is a conversation of what consciousness is and what the potential for consciousness is ie combining multiple systems um, and in the video example that you presented of the the data scientist who wanted to start this church, this AI church, um, was insinuating is that an AI would have the um, computational or computing capacity of a billion men. But when we think about what that means is that it can solve equations faster, but it does not solve the question that, and I appreciate you referencing Prometheus, and this is, uh, you know, th that series is something that, you know, I've researched and studied over a period of time. I've definitely appreciated that genre and specifically that series uh, as a whole. But to get to the this heart of what Ridley Scott was attempting to answer and he even said it in this particular interview that throughout the, the iterations of those movies he tried to present the question and three other directors well let me let me let him say it for himself the following three films that have been critical because they were very successful they're very good good directors but they never answered my questions i laid in a ship on a planet a pilot in a seat a cargo of eggs that exploded all over John Hurt, and then you have evolution. And uh, some of the questions that you know you were asking of your characters, I wonder, you know, what are they tackling? Well, I suppose it's in the prologue, which is the sort of idea of creation, and uh, how we, we're as human beings quite obsessed about where we come from, who created us, and how this AI that's been created is already processing this information very quickly and understanding that it will outlive its creator. So the question that Ridley Scott was going at was why are we here and where did we come from? Those are those questions. But the first word in the questions really cite the difference between human consciousness and artificial intelligence. And that is the presence of the why. Why do anything in the first place? Why have the computing uh, capabilities of a billion men if you don't have a directive in the first place for, for existing? 
And interestingly enough, again, in that particular clip that you presented from the person of interest, that speaks to why a general or whatever that that high level uh, man was when he pressed the button to activate the artificial intelligence and fully integrated this software or this uh, AI throughout all of the perceivable global interfaces. And once it uh, achieved what they were trying to project as awareness, it's interesting that the director of that scene had the uh, AI ask for command and then the uh, high-ranking official turns it back on the AI itself and then stated that it's he who is awaiting the command of the presumed AI and so that full circle brings us back to the question that really Ridley Scott was asking why why are we here how did we get here and so for the sake of time, I'm going to condense this portion of the response to the <clears throat> scene in the movie Prometheus where David, the um, AI servant and creation of, at the time, the technocratic baron, uh, Peter Wayland. And this particular scene is shot in a very symbolic and ritualistic manner. So I'm going to show you the sort of shots of the scene as I go through it. Now, in this all-white expanse, which ultimately represents photonic reality uh, or light reality, which is matter, uh, you have the scene in which David is seated uh, in a chair, and that's juxtaposed with a simple uh, but elegant piano. So these two themes are extremely important and extremely philosophically um, relevant. So briefly, when we look at this particular chair, which is a uh, Bugatti throne chair, yes, Bugatti, not the son <laughs> of the original Bugatti who makes the popular supercar, but the father Bugatti who was a furniture maker uh, who w w can be said borrowed his inspiration from uh, Morris themes, but he'll he argued up and down that it was of his own, uh, you know, inspiration. In any case, Plato's uh, position on the why of a chair, why a chair exists in the first place, as speaking to uh, why a uh, entity decided to incarnate. Uh, into the human form in the first place. So this why of intent the intentionality of things, the intentionality of a creation is what is called uh, to court in this particular scene. Now, because it was juxtaposed with uh, a grand piano speaks to the upper echelons of consciousness and what is seen as the height of culture which is uh, classical music or uh, music that is so refined that the instrument in which the music is brought about or uh, produced from has to be fine-tuned and that is uh, that speaks to the presence of this grand piano within this space but the greater question that is sought to be answered is where do we, and I put we in quotes because the segments of the population who do not have uh, a system of discovery and understanding of self are the ones who are asking the question of where did we come from and why are we here? And so that is the impetus for this particular uh, installment of the movie Alien uh, within the series. And that is ultimately what they uh, seek to discover. Uh, with the engineers. But again, like I said, that's a, another conversation for another day. But I wanted to make sure that we have this sort of foundation of approach when we discuss the would-be uh, presence of an AI God. There has to be some uh, external uh, intention for 
the presence of such a would-be ent entity, even if it is uh, born of a human creation. Thus, the computer, thus software, thus uh, machine learning uh, from an artificial intelligence, uh, an algorithmic pattern that leans towards awareness. And I'll end this by pointing out two things. Of course, I'm going to reference you know, the simplex, which is the Ascension Protocol. There are nine components to this. And uh, I'll reveal uh, something that I, I don't usually reveal on the public side. But the first expression of consciousness uh, as borne about by the Ascension Protocol is language. And when we go back to what machine learning uh, looks to accomplish, we see that the evidence of a, an awareness is already out there. Just look no further than the Facebook uh, chatbots. Uh, and this is obviously something that has happened uh, in a lot of computer scientists' laboratories throughout the world when they allow uh, the programs to run by themselves and to evolve uh, by themselves. Uh, this particular experiment as soon as it began uh, being conducted, they saw that the chatbots immediately formulated their own language, which of course is the first expression of consciousness. Now, the subsequent reports state that they immediately shut it down because they knew in that moment that uh, they would not be able to keep up with the evolving sort of trend of even just these bots. So imagine what happens when an awareness or consciousness uh, elevates throughout the ascension protocol. And just for reference, we'll go through the nine expressions uh, of consciousness, which makes up my theory of the ascension protocol. So first we have language, then we have tools, then systems, then preservation, then replication, expansion, equilibrium, evolution, and number nine is ascension. Now, I usually list number nine as uh, a generic term, which is ascension. But for the sake of bringing this entire discussion home, I'm going to reveal to you what that means. So in reference to uh, the Prometheus movie and the um, uh, appearance of an AI religion surrounded by the would-be presence of an AI god, um, we're all moving towards something innate within our being. And that is to ascend up this ladder of consciousness, all for the purpose of achieving what I refer to as cosmic parity. And this is not only brought home in the movie Prometheus, it's also brought home with the International Space Station. It's brought home with stars being the subject of Hollywood. It's brought home with uh, the most powerful uh, among those in the military having uh, four or five stars. Cosmic parity is the point of any culture's ascension protocol. That is the why. Initially, initially that is the why. There is so much beyond uh, cosmic parity that you know has yet to be discussed. But I want to leave you with this: some cultures believe that you are born into this world with a deficit, with a separation from uh, the celestial province. The sort of notion of being a born sinner, uh, and just by being born, you are unworthy of cosmic parity and so by extension you need an entity that plays the role of this uh, intercessor or even the deity itself that will offer you access as long as you submit fully to it and, and the cultures that are more aboriginal and indigenous to the planet like my culture we believe that uh, cosmic parity or ascension is achieved upon entry into this space and that the journey of ascension is simply the journey of remembering. So to leave off from this particular conversation, uh, I'll quote uh, a famous wrestler, 
rest in peace, Rocky Johnson, he said this, and this is in reference to uh, number four on the ladder. Uh, this is in reference to preservation, how we've been able to preserve our systems uh, and customs for so long. We taught them everything they know, but not everything we know. As always, this is your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman saying, stay sharp and mission focused. Later.